Welcome to Planning, Management, and Leadership for Health IT, Key Concepts Associated with Leadership. This is Lecture A, Authority, Creativity, and Cross-Cultural Leadership. In this lecture, we will cover some of the key concepts associated with leadership, authority, creativity, and cross-cultural leadership. The objectives for this unit, key concepts associated with leadership, are to describe and discuss the role of authority in the HIT environment, compare and contrast recognized versus expert authority in context with the healthcare environment, explain creativity's role in healthcare, explain the importance of recognizing and managing the cross-cultural organization. Define emotional intelligence. List and describe the four competencies in social intelligence. Define motivation in the context of the current HIT environment. Distinguish between intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Describe the role of motivation in group dynamics. The first topic we'll cover in this presentation is authority. Ask the average person on the street what comes to mind when they hear the word authority. For some, authority means the law, as in an officer of the law. Other people associate authority with someone who is the expert. This could be an expert in a particular topic or someone with a very specialized skill as in the leading authority on EMRs. Still, other people associate authority with an office that has the right to control certain actions. Examples of this type of authority include the local housing authority or the parking authority. None of these concepts is actually incorrect. What we'll cover in this series of slides, however, is authority in the context of leadership, and especially some of the more subtle nuances that exist between authoritative relationships in a healthcare organization. First of all, what is the difference between authority and power? Authority implies a certain legitimacy, that one has the right to use his or her position to make something happen or to prevent something from happening. For example, a policeman has the authority to arrest someone. Power, on the contrary, is the ability of an individual to convince someone to do something he or she would not ordinarily do. This can be good or bad. Convincing smokers to change their habits is a good form of power. Using your influence or power to double-cross a coworker, however, is not so good. Many scholars who study the ideas of leadership and authority suggest that authority belongs to a sanctioned and mutually recognized role. The President of the United States, for instance, embodies the authority that comes from his office. For the most part, sanctioned and mutually recognized roles come with specific types of power. But there are always exceptions. Let's look at two such exceptions. Neither Martin Luther King, Jr., one of the key figures in the civil rights movement, nor Lech Walesa, the shipyard worker who became the father of the solidarity movement in Poland, was ever granted authority by a recognized or sanctioned body. Yet, each of these men convinced people from all walks of life to rise up for a cause and, in effect, change the course of history. Each of these individuals was certainly considered a leader, but neither of them had an official title or held a specific office. In a hospital setting, you may see a similar situation. There will always be an organizational structure with appointed authoritative leaders in the executive or C-suite, the CEO, CFO, CIO, etc. However, if another constituent group in the hospital, whether it is the nurses or the surgeons or the maintenance staff, decided to go on strike, the hospital could not continue to function effectively. The shift of power is delicate, 
and it doesn't always rest with the person who has the sanctioned authoritative title. Now let's look at the physician practice setting. There may be situations in which there are recognized authorities, as in the partners who own the practice, or in the office manager. And then there are also individuals or groups who have authority of a different type. As an implementation specialist, you'll have to use your emotional intelligence skills to find the balance of power. For example, the sponsor of a project who is not as engaged as he or she should be may unknowingly be ceding power to another authority. One of the other concepts of authority and leadership focuses on the tendency of people to gravitate toward charismatic leaders. Charismatic leaders usually galvanize their followers through their personalities. They are generally well-liked or respected individuals, even though they may not always have an official title. John F. Kennedy was one such young leader who garnered enthusiasm and support throughout his first presidential campaign. Eventually, he did earn an official title and is still considered one of the most charismatic presidents in recent history. Another example is Rudy Giuliani, the former mayor of New York City. After the September 11th attacks on the World Trade Center, Giuliani, the outgoing mayor of the city, emerged as the face of leadership and reason during that terrorist crisis, even though Michael Bloomberg had just been elected mayor. Charismatic leaders can often emerge during crisis situations. This may be the case during an implementation or a go-live, two events which always contain certain elements of surprise or unpredictability. When things do not go according to plan, someone like a project sponsor may have to answer to a board of directors or work things out with a vendor until the problem is solved. In these cases, a charismatic leader from the implementation team is usually called upon to help sort out problems occurring on the front line. Charismatic leaders inspire their followers to go beyond the limits they typically set for themselves. In a healthcare setting, you may have a leader who challenges everyone to meet a certain quality goal or cost-saving measure. The charismatic leader is successful repeatedly because the leader convinces or inspires people to do something for a cause, not for the leader. In your role as an implementation manager, you just might be that charismatic leader yourself. Or you may need to appoint someone in the organization who can fill that role. This person isn't just a cheerleader. Charismatic leaders must know why something is being done and inspire followers to buy into the goal or vision. For example, there may be an advocate from nursing or radiology who has a good understanding of the concept of meaningful use of health IT and can convey that in terms that will drive people to participate more fully in the system implementation. The bottom line with charismatic leaders is that they are not blindly followed but are well respected and have a track record of being successful. Having examined the aspects of authority in the charismatic leader, Let's take a look into how creativity plays a role in leadership in healthcare. When we talk about creativity and leadership, we typically don't think of healthcare. Google or 3M or Apple might come to mind, but your well known hospitals typically don't pop up immediately. This is not to say that there aren't creatively led hospitals, but Healthcare hasn't lent itself to be in the creative category for the following reasons. In the first place, we deal with life and death on a minute by minute basis. Healthcare organizations are knowledge based, and leaders tend to make decisions based on proof only, and for good reason. The second reason that healthcare organizations do not tend to foster creativity is that they are inwardly focused. Although there is always competition for a market share of patients or services, we typically focus on quality or patient safety within our own hospital. You may see stories in the news about publicly traded companies who seek stock surges when a new creative leader takes the helm, 
but publicly traded companies are on a different playing field than healthcare companies. Change in healthcare tends to be slower and more gradual. Finally, the creative leader really only benefits when everyone in an organization is encouraged to be creative. People at a staff level have to buy into the creative leader's vision and answer the call to be creative, and this may be difficult to achieve. A good example of a creative leader inspiring staff to be creative involves Southwest Airlines. Southwest has a loyal customer base, in large part due to its creative cabin staff. An inspired cabin crew can make fun out of the mundane task of making passengers comply with federal aviation regulations through rhymes or raps or games. The creativity of the employees is encouraged and rewarded. Many implementations will require additional positive energy and creativity, like the Southwest Airlines flight attendants exhibit. There will be long days and nights and enthusiasm will go a long way to keeping people excited about the end result of the implementation. As healthcare IT practitioners, we are often in the position of asking nurses and physicians to change their workflow. If you are asking a physician to change the way she does things, you will likely need to provide some sort of incentive, and this requires creativity. In a way, calling technology a solution is a misnomer. Technology is only part of the solution. Getting physicians and users to actually adopt the technology is the other part. The financial incentives that are part of the high-tech legislation can help. But if you're asking someone to change, your creative response may be more important than the technology and analytical part of the problem. The one thing we can count on in healthcare IT is that our work, which has impact on people's lives, is constant. We have a very visible impact on the physician community, and there is typically much more demand for IT than managers can fulfill. While there are many great ideas for improvements to EHRs or other systems, sometimes we'll have to be creative in getting buy-in when the answer is no. It may mean taking a 50,000-foot view of the current project portfolio to find out where idle resources may be or if a project's needs have already been addressed elsewhere and the project can be shortened somehow. So, while healthcare does not tend to foster creativity, there may be elements of creativity that we can draw on. The first such example is Benjamin Franklin who had the luck of good timing on his side. He was a leader with both innovative ideas and a receptive marketplace in which to try out his ideas. Most of Franklin's inventions were created out of intellectual curiosity. Look at the example of him flying the kite with the key at the end. You know the story. The key conducted electricity, which led to experiments with lightning rods and electricity generation. In this case, creativity and curiosity led to an important invention. The same sort of creativity could lead to innovations in technology in the healthcare setting. Richard Branson is another creative leader. Branson mastered the art of flying people very comfortably and very expensively around the globe through his airline, Virgin Airlines. When he'd mastered this art, he didn't just stop. Like Benjamin Franklin, Branson has had a series of successes on his side, but always keeps his creative outlets open and considers that his success lies in what's ahead of him, not what he's already done. After Branson mastered the art of commercial flying, he took it one step further and is now planning the first commercial space travel business. In Franklin and Branson, we see leaders who are constantly thinking about innovation and what the next big thing is. In healthcare, we can emulate this by maintaining awareness of the world around us. Are there innovations happening in another industry that would work well in healthcare? Inspiring ideas can be a great motivator, but only good leaders will have the patience and persistence to convince people that their idea is worth exploring. 
For example, in your capacity on an EHR implementation team, don't be afraid to think outside the box and voice an idea that you think might be worth exploring. It may not be acted upon immediately, but your ability to think creatively will at least be noted. And now a few notes about the importance of cross-cultural leadership. The United States has long been considered the great melting pot, and perhaps nowhere is this more evident than in the healthcare setting. A hospital may have a great deal of diversity among its own staff, and that staff in turn may be treating an equally diverse patient population. Clearly, this presents many leadership challenges. The astute leader must learn how to adapt to these challenges. In the next few slides, we'll explore some of these cultural differences and how good leadership must deal with them. Ethnic, racial, and religious groups are actually subcultures or groups that distinguish themselves from other groups, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. It's important to recognize that allegiances to specific subcultures may be very strong. Reasons for doing certain things, like praying at different times of the day or eating only specific kinds of foods, may seem odd to some people, but are perfectly acceptable to members of these subcultures. What's important for leaders or managers to understand is that they must work within these differences. A mobile adoption support specialist will encounter many different subcultures in different organizations. Be sure to educate yourself prior to going to an organization. Are there religious holidays that will fall on an important go-live date? Does your team schedule meetings around times of the day that might be crucial times of prayer or observation? Another crucial part of cross-cultural leadership is understanding the political values of the organization. These values can sometimes be specific to a geographical region of the country, but aren't always that predictable. There may even be political differences within a hospital organization. As a leader, you'll want to err on the side of diplomacy and avoid any political issues. This isn't always easy to do when you are part of a program sponsored in part by the federal government, like the high-tech programs. There may also be organizational politics that can make implementation difficult, especially if some groups are resistant to change. Education on the benefits or return on investment should be stressed. The culture of the specific organization must be considered. Is it militaristic? creative, research-focused. Any one of these could be a guide to how you and your team should interact with the staff of an organization. For instance, the differences in culture in a pediatric hospital and an adult acute care hospital are enormous. In a pediatric hospital, it's not at all unusual to be in an elevator with three children in wheelchairs, a couple of nurses wearing pink and green polka-dotted scrubs, and a circus clown. If you saw a clown in an adult acute care hospital, chances are pretty good that the clown's already been stopped by or is being followed by security. Finally, a word or two about the broad range of generations working in healthcare organizations. Many new physicians and nurses have grown up with technology and knew how to type when they were six years old. These people, however, will be working shoulder to shoulder with people who did not grow up with technology to support their processes. Some people may be more resistant to using new technology, and others still may embrace it, but have a much higher learning curve and need more support. Leaders of healthcare IT need to understand these cultural differences and account for them in their training, communication, and implementation project plans. Culture is complex and multifaceted, and managing it is an increasingly time-consuming task for many healthcare leaders. At the same time, leaders can also create a culture for an organization by what they say, and especially by what they do. This concludes Lecture A of Key Concepts Associated with Leadership. In summary, the first take-home point 
is for leaders of teams or organizations to make actionable progress toward building the type of culture they want. Nothing is worse than empty words from a leader. It discredits him or her almost immediately. Creativity does have a place in healthcare. Often, during an implementation, creative workarounds produce change for the better. Information technology, with its mobile applications, finds more clever ways every day to manage patient information. Finally, recognize that authority comes in many forms and has many faces. Like walking on a tightrope, there must be balance between those with officially sanctioned leadership roles and the charismatic leaders who inspire their followers.